Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today is going to be a little bit different. So this is kind of a little forewarning on that. Um, we're going to be working on watercolor, but um, you know, sometimes art, when people paint, they might be painting, you know, commission, something for somebody, something to maybe sell down the line, um, something as an experiment, you know, trying to learn a approach. Um, and other times painting is just used as a uh, therapeutic method. Um, and this is going to be one of those therapeutic methods. But the subject matter will probably be kind of like dark, fantasy, imaginary, surreal type scene. There will be a little bit of um, kind of a concept taking place, but I really don't have anything planned. But I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, just recently within my own life, uh, between me and my um, fiance, our extended families, both of them, are having um, some people with health issues. So it's just been a little um, heavy on the mind. And then a few days ago, one of my um, high school friends, and college friend, college buddy and all that, he, uh, he passed away in a um, car accident. That was um, probably three days ago at this point. Um, so that kind of hit a little bit hard. So uh, today, you know, it's just going to be kind of therapeutic, see what happens. But it's also going to be, like I said, kind of a dark fantasy oriented um, painting. Or I guess sometimes you just need to do something like that just to kind of, I don't know, release energy or attention or whatever. So I apologize immensely if this subject matter winds up being super dark. It's uh, going to be influenced by the gothic painters like the late 1700s early 1800s it's also going to be influenced by um Betsinski, a uh, polish painter um from this century who had passed away um and he had very dark fantasy art so it's going to be kind of those ideas and then material wise, I'm going to use watercolor, but I think that I might also move over into um, gouache on top. My idea is to play around with transparency versus opacity. Uh, most likely having the sky remain transparent. I'll painting very thickly with either transparent, um, sorry, opaque watercolors, or simply um, using gouache or maybe even um, ink. And so we'll see. So it'll probably be a long video, and I hope uh, you can tough it out, and hopefully there's some stuff to glean from it. If not, I completely understand. So I'm just taking ultramarine blue and uh, raw sienna and kind of putting it in just to kind of put that soft sky in and kind of get an idea. I'm probably going to wind up lifting out some areas in a moment as I'm going to try to uh, place some elements. I think that uh, background building trees would be interesting. Or maybe a um, a gothic esque ruin will take place, but I'm not quite sure just yet. What would have been beneficial is if I had um, kind of sketched up a compositional idea. But I really want it to be just kind of stream of conscious, and like I said, more of a therapeutic aspect. Um, light red oxide, ultramarine right here, just 
just so I can establish my horizon just to get an idea. This might not be anywhere in the final painting. It's just to help me get things situated. I think maybe in this area I'll have a um, Gothic ruin take place. I'm just kind of mapping it out. I may just uh, lift it out with the paper towel. We'll see. And I was also thinking about lifting out maybe a moon, maybe letting this start um, being a little bit of a nighttime scene. Here's some Payne's Gray into that mix. So, as I'm thinking, maybe a lifted out moon, maybe down here somewhere, a little bit of water, and lift out the moon reflection. a little burnt sienna in there. I may have, um, a uh, crucifixion-esque spot here. And I'm going to want trees to start cropping in on the side. By the way, this is a 11 by 14 Stonehenge Aqua. 11 by 15, so a mat would come to about here. I'll go ahead and lift my moon out now. And coming straight down. That's where its reflections will be. So I'm going wet and wet, but these areas will um, be dry now that I had lifted that spot out. I'm going to grab Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson. Dark clouds. Just feeding wet and wet. Now, since it's going to be nighttime, that far horizon should be darker due to the moon being on the other side of it. So it's going to be our vertical element, the 
that's going to um, have a light source behind it, so it makes it darker. Um, in the book, I believe, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting, it's a pretty old book. He has, um, I think it's Carlson's Theory of Angles. And he'll split up a landscape painting into three or four basic shapes, positions. The sky, the ground, and uh, vertical structures. And how those are, in relationship to the angle of the light, determines the tonal value, the darkness or lightness of those things. For example, vertical things would have the light more behind it, so they'd be darker in relationship to the ground, which would catch more light, depending on where the light source is coming from. I think I had done a video on that a while back. I can look into uh, revisiting that. So here I'm going to allow water there is um, a compositional shape called I think the steel mill where you would have a lot it's like a balance beam you have a large object in the middle and then a smaller object further out from the middle. That would help balance the composition. However, here I'm gonna have a large background element on this side, and then I'm thinking even a larger background element here. So it might fall in line with kind of a triangular compositional element. We'll see what takes place. some background trees form a little bit more. Uh, when I do this, I'm flattening out my paper because as it gets saturated, it wants to buckle. And doing that with the binder clips helps stretch that paper out. Um, still working in wet and wet. Ultramarine and burnt sienna. So this is a stronger combination. highlights I'm being pretty timid with this building back here um, because of the wet and wet stage, it is going to um, diffuse some around it, which is probably acceptable for this, um, this structure and the scene, but I would like it to be more crisp. I 
I want to make sure it reads as a um, building. If it paints gray, we'll start darkening this. Tree elements and more. It's going to come from the foreground, come alongside. Darken this corner, almost out of habit. Um, just that whole framing device that I'm always talking about. would come down in the shadow. What I think might be interesting is a path right here. May have to wipe out a little bit better or scrape a path out. I think I will have, like I mentioned earlier, kind of crucifixion type figures in here. But I'm going to save that for my um, my next stage once I do a dry off. gray. If I do try to get more pigment on here. sloping hills. Some tree structures that would cover up the base of that background castle church. Maybe this little path will go around and pop up here a little bit. Compositionally, it might be a little weird because it's so in line with um, the moon and the moon's reflection. Okay, so created a path. Get a little bit of overgrowth coming up over on top of it. And all the while, I'm keeping in mind that we are going to have a softening take place once we do a dry off.
So I'm looking for anything that I can exploit in the wet and wet phase for that soft effects. Okay, so I'm going to call this the wet and wets phase. I think it would be easier if I do it as multiple parts upload. So um, this will be part one. Um, please, you know, like, subscribe, follow, and all that other stuff. But stay tuned for part two. But let me do a dry off just so we could see what it looks like first. So let me pause this. Okay, so after the dry off, you can see how soft everything is. And the next attempt will now be to um, kind of bring some more opacity to certain spots. So I will be back with another video. Hope you enjoy.